Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Dom, back with another video. I know, I know, I know. Don't yell at me, you guys. It's been, like, forever since I posted a video, and I'm kind of all over the place. But because of the new baby and the new house and all these changes in my life, things have been freaking crazy. But we're going to get back to this video. Today, we are doing 4X um, trading. I'm going to be marking up the charts. We're going to be doing three pairs, I believe. And possibly giving you guys like you know what I would do in a, in a particular setup um, again this is not financial advice or anything like that I'm not a financial advisor this is all just for entertainment purposes because I don't need nobody trying to come after me if y'all lose your money okay so anyways um we're gonna go ahead and get this started um, I am using Smart Trader. Um, at first, I was using Trading View, but I like Smart Trader a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go into charts. And if you guys are not familiar with Smart Trader, it makes trading, at least marking up the charts, so much easier. Especially for me um, with Trading View, like it didn't keep a history of like the different type of tools that I was using and the actions that I was using, like off to the side or anything like that. So. Um, like if I needed to take something off or um, like um, make it disappear for a little bit just so I could see if my chart was a little bit chaotic um, it's kind of hard to do that but with smart trader um, everything is right where you need it to be um, so I guess I'll run down like some of the tools that I use first um, right here in the top left corner you have your currency pairs um, then you have your time frames um, I like to start out with um, the yearly time frame, I do a um, multi time frame uh, chart analysis. Um, we're doing a top down, and like I said, I like to start with the yearly. That way, I can get the direction right. One of the biggest things in trading is getting the direction right. If you can do that, then you're halfway there. <laughs> um, anyways, so then we have our time frames here and then here you have the type of um, visuals that you can do. You can either do bars, you can do candles, you can do the Heikinashi or anything like that. I just use basic candles. Um, then we have the zoom, um, back button, forward button. This is your cursor. Um, the difference between cursors is a complete uh, just basic arrow. Notice how price does not move on the side with it. Um, arrow with markers. I like this one that way I can see um, the price and then I can also see the timestamp on the bottom. And then the last one is just crosshairs, which is also pretty good too. Actually, I might switch to that one. Um, and I did not purchase the premium plan for uh, Smart Trader. Um, they do have other tools that you can use, like the Smart Fab, Smart Wave, Smart Patterns, Smart Support and Resistance, which is super helpful. Um, but like I said, I didn't pay for it. So I just have the little basic thing that they gave to me, which is the Smart Fib, which works for me just fine. Here we have our charting tools, uh, the trend line, the ray, horizontal ray, horizontal line, vertical line, so on and so forth. Um, the ones that I use, trend lines, yes. Horizontal lines, yes. Ellipses, yes. And rectangles, yes. You'll see why in a minute. And then here um, you have the Fibonacci tools all the retracements and extension tools. Um, I do use a Fibonacci as well. Here you have like the King's Crown, the Head and Shoulders. Um, you can chart out the ABCD waves, your Elliott waves, things like that. And then here uh, you have your um, like text bubbles, arrows, dots, things like that. I usually use the arrows if I'm trying to point out like a double top, triple top, triple bottom, something like that. Just um, so when I go and I'm looking at my charts, I usually look at my charts daily like every night just to see what's what's changed i don't mark up charts every day i mark up charts every week i do a full top um top down once a month and then um like i said every every night or so every morning i'll go and i'll see what will happen and you know readjust some things if i need to and then they also have like a quick synopsis of uh, bearish patterns or bullish patterns and then on the left side, the only thing that I really use here is just the ruler. That way I can see the types of um, uh, my risk to reward ratio. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start out by charting out the US dollar first. Um, you want to do that. That way you have a idea of 
what your currency pairs are gonna look like even before you get started. We're talking about the Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar, the US dollar, uh, the Japanese yen, US dollar, things like that. So go ahead and type in US dollar. And this is the index. I don't trade this. I don't hand trade moves. Um, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and start with the US dollar. And again, we mark these out so we can get an idea of what our other um, pairs that have the US dollar as a base pair would look like before we even get started. So let's take a look at what's going on for the year. As you guys can see, since 2011, we've been bullish. Like we've been going to the moon. So we go ahead and take our horizontal lines. And I, I like my lines to look different. That way it, it's a little bit easier for my eye to see. And here I'm just marking off all, um, well not all, but my extreme highs and my extreme lows. The reason why I go all the way down to the bottom of the wick or to the top of the wick because at one point that's where price was so we have to respect that. I know a lot of people they like to just you know mark their charts where the candle closed or where it opened. No, you have to use the wick too because price was there at one point. Alright, so then we're going to go down to our month. And again, I'm only marking extreme highs and lows, but then I also have them color coordinated as well. So black is yearly, dark purple is monthly, dark blue daily, and so on and so forth. And if you have, um, you know, two areas that are very close, you can you can take the more recent one. So here I have my yearly and my monthly. And what I like to do is I like to go ahead and lock these in place because I have a habit of moving them when I'm trying to finish my charting. So, And then if you feel like it's a little bit too chaotic, um, you can always just turn them off. And even if you do that, Let's see, let me turn that one off. It's still highlighted right here. So if you ever feel like your lines are too messy or you know it's too much to look at, you can always do that. I usually do that um, when I feel like it's getting you know too much. Um, leave that one. So then this one here. Okay. So now we're gonna go down to the weekly. And then you can always readjust them once you get, um, you know what, I don't like this, this is too long. There you go, so I'm gonna use two. Readjust it and then lock it again. And then mark out your extreme highs and lows. So this was a level. Make sure you change your colors. That way you know the time frame you're on. This was a level. every single one of them like if you can look with your eye and see that that's a level you might not necessarily have to um, mark it so teal is for my daily Like, this is okay because um, none of this really matters down here. Not right now, anyway, because we're all the way up here. Whenever it gets lower, then I would go ahead and I would mark all of these out. But right now, like, already it's, like, a little chaotic, so we don't have to do that. And then we're going to go 
going to our four hour. And I usually stop um, on the four hour just because it gets a little bit hectic. I'm just marking out recent levels. When you're um, marking your extreme highs and lows, I completely forgot to explain this. So an extreme high, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zoom in on this, right? You have a high candle, two candles to the left that are lower, two candles to the right that are lower. This would be an extreme high. An extreme low would be the opposite. You have a low right here, two candles to the left that are higher, two candles to the right that are higher. It is not always a perfect arrow like this one. Sometimes it may be a little fugly down here or even like right there. It's not picture perfect all the time, but yeah, those are your extreme highs and your lows. I am a swing trader. Um, I also do like, you know, day-to-day -day trades and stuff like that. But um, the way I do my analysis, I go based off of the extreme highs and extreme lows because that's when you'll see um, price reverse or retrace and yeah okay so now that I have everything marked out I'm actually gonna go back to the weekly and we're gonna start placing fibs so we can see where we are um, in time go ahead and lock all these and actually some of these I can actually turn off all, like everything up in here I could I can turn off I don't necessarily need all of these on yes that one take this one off that one off some of these blue ones Um, and they're still here on the timeline, but they're just not on the actual graph, which is okay. So, um, again, the reason why that we would chart this out first is because, let's say we're trying to do the Aussie dollar next. Um, you, you can see what pair um, going up against the US dollar, how they're doing. So what I'm gonna do, take my ellipse tool, if it turns on, Put it here and I'll make it purple. Because when I rub my fib, I'm going to do it from the most recent extreme low which is here. You wanna do that because you wanna be accurate. So you're gonna take your smart fib here, put it right underneath there. Boom, there we are. You can see where price is currently. So on an A, B move, this is zero to 100%. You can see price came down just underneath the 860 and then because now it's headed towards the D extension, right? Go ahead and zoom this in a little bit. You can see where we're at here. This is where price is currently, where this little red arrow is. So I'm actually going to drop another fib because it basically almost came all the way down. And you can see on a 0 to 100% move, we haven't had a retracement yet. So that's what we're waiting on, on the weekly time frame. If you go to the daily, 
you can see we're almost at that at the extension and we're starting to move down so this is our extreme high this is where prices and again we're on the four hour so anything that's going against the US dollar at the moment is going to be up because the US dollar is going down but it's just a retracement because overall the US dollar is bearish I mean um, bullish so go back down go back to the day you see we're on, we're on track to hit that D extension we have the A B C D wave A B C is the deepest point in the retracement of the A B boundary that's gonna be here and then it's gonna go up to the D extension which is here again like anything having to do with trading stock crypto it's never a straight line up or down it moves in waves so right now we are um, going down we're, we're tracing before we hit that D extension so that is the US dollar now we're gonna go to the Aussie dollar and we're gonna chart this out we're gonna do a top-down analysis going from I well I guess you can do it on the yearly first that's why I'm let's, let's stay consistent here so as you can see it went up and it fell off cliff <laughs> so we're, we're in a downtrend right now and that's important you need to know the direction of the market that way you know how to place your trade so go ahead and get our horizontal lines match it up with our extreme high there remember our yearly is black our extreme low here Boom. lock those in place we're gonna go to the monthly and we're gonna do the same thing all right so this one is basically the same same level um, and then we're gonna go down here. I'm gonna change the color to purple. Now, the reason why I don't wanna mark all of these, not right now, because anything left side of the mountain, anything in the shadow, I, I'm not worried about because it already happened. What I'm worried about is where it's going to now. So, let me see. So the more support and resistance touches you get, the stronger that level is. So anything on the bottom, that's your floor, that's going to be support. That's what's holding you up, right? When you get to the top, that's the ceiling. That's resistance keeping you down in a sense. So um, you want to always go ahead and mark your support and resistance lines. Um, because these are important levels. You'll see price react at these levels. So now we have our monthly done. I'll probably add in, I don't know, um, this one too. This one seems important. Actually, no, this one right here is cool. Take it down to the weekly. See how we have two touches there. Bam. Make this dark blue. Because we are on the weekly. We got another one. Bam. Then we got another one. Bam. Okay. So these are all of our resistances here. We also got to mark our supports. We got one right here. This one. And then we have a couple in this range here. Boom, 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 boom,
boom, boom, boom, boom. Now remember, price does not go to a particular point. Price goes to a range. So you can see sometimes it was underneath, sometimes it was above, sometimes it was underneath, sometimes, you know, it was all in the mix. That's a zone, right? So now we have those done. Um, sorry, I'm getting notifications here. <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -ta. Then we're gonna go down to the daily. We're gonna do the same thing. Lastly, we're going to go back to the four hour and do this yet again. Now this time, I'm only going to go from this touch here. So anything on this side of the mountain, that's what I'm looking at. Because that's what's most relevant. That just happened. Make that orange. Got this one here. like last time we're going to go ahead and start to place our fib that way we can see how accurate we are and where we are on the waves actually first we need to get our trend lines so I'm going from here got our trend line I like to make my trend lines magenta or fuchsia, sorry. Um, take it from the top point, stretch it out, bring it down, first touch, and bring it right here. So when I go to a lower time frame, I can still move it. All right, so we got this touch right here. You never wanna cut through candles. As soon as you get a touch, you make a new trend line. Trend lines tell you the direction and the momentum of the market. Boom, got another touch. So then we have that touch there. As you can see, it needs to be adjusted a little bit. Bring it a little bit closer. Got that one there. see bearish 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 super bearish like we got a lot of sellers in this market here price drop like crazy so now that we have our trend lines we go back back to the week we're gonna use this price action here this is this was an extreme high this is the highest high, um, you know. So 
then we drop our fib from there. That way we can see how accurate we are, where, where, where we are in the market. So you bring it over the extreme high, drop it like that. So right now, let me, let me backtrack. So all of these fibs have been completed. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, right? This is the most recent one that we're on, on a weekly time frame. A, B, price pulled back, and it's going back down for that um, D extension. So, let's see, let's figure out what we can do here. I'm gonna go on my daily chart. So I'm gonna go, um, I like to trade on the four hour chart. So I'm gonna go to, to the most recent extreme high, which is here. And then I'm gonna drop a fib. That way we can see what's going on. Let me put my lips so I can remember where I took that fib from. Now, right away, actually, let me turn it off real quick. Right away, I can see that this was a double top. Price pulled back, came back, retest the support line, rejected, down. Tried again, rejected, down. So, even though we've already missed this move, I like to go ahead and highlight it anyway. a bunch of charts on top of each other and it just it's just chaos so anyways um we're running our fib from the most recent high which was april of 22 turn this fib back on so we are waiting for for retracement from a zero to 100 percent move i mean i guess we we got a shallow retracement to the 236 but you know, depending on your trade rules, you can go ahead and play this. You can play it down to the uh, 1618, or you can wait for a retracement, a deeper retracement to 382, 50, or to 618, right? Um, but if you're like me, I like to do some smaller plays. Um, actually, give you guys some ideas here so four hour oh well, this is where we are on the one hour now if you wanted to get in a trade you would want to go down to your lower time frame that way you can find a good entry point or you can also find you know some sub fibs in there so let's see what we got going zone so from that double top which is here. Place another fib. And even this one, see, this seems like a, a better play to me because it retraced down to the 382. So let me go ahead and mark this. We'll mark this a And I do that that way I don't get confused on what fib fib line I'm looking at or where I got it from. So I can't, I'm not, we can't play this one, so there's no point even having that one. So we can just cancel this one. Now this one, we can't play. It's a bam. So A, B, price pull back to 382, C. Red matches with red. So if it's here, we can project that price will eventually get here or somewhere around here. I like to put my stop loss a little bit above the D extension above the um, the projected line, just because some people like to take profit beforehand and then you can get 
cotton drawback and I don't like that so you could play this one a B you had a 38% pullback we can expect it to go down here so from where it's at already um, from the retracement oh 84 pips to 215 pips not a bad deal not a bad deal you could play this now two things you can do you can either put your stop loss above your C that way your risk to reward ratio is higher that way if price comes back it might not necessarily hit the C and then it'll go down if it does then you got stopped out but that's okay because you already calculated what your risk was you're risking let's say if you put it above the C you put it at you know the 68801 you're risking 91 pips to make 213 so that's still almost a two to one or you can play it safe and you can put your stop above the A that way if it takes out the C you know you still have your A as long as it doesn't take out the A things will still go your way <laughs> remember that anyways but your risk to reward ratio would not be that high you're risking 200 let's say let me get it at here 70 84 1 you're risking 295 pips to make 216 mm, up to you you know but you can also get in on a smaller play right let's drop another fib on the next high after this fib boom look where we're at all right on a zero to 100 move price pulled back definitely to the 50 almost to the 61a but it's still within red range so you can still project price would be somewhere in here now price is already on a C level but look check this out and change the color real quick what is that price got here rejected it came back retested um, well, I guess it doesn't happen on here but anyway this would be considered double top boom boom double tops are typically bearish but we don't know for sure but what you could do if you wanted to play this again you would put your stop above the C so let's say I'm gonna put it above the 61 8 for 25 pips so you risk 25 pips or let's, let's make it 30 for 174 not bad and that's if you're putting your stop above your seat this is a little bit more of an aggressive play now if you put it above your a you're risking let's say 95 pips for 170 that's still that's still pretty good how much is that your risk to reward ratio I said 95 to 170 1.78 almost 2 to 1 not bad so you can either play this move or you can wait depending on what you like to trade so one of the things that I have planned I'm gonna take this trade and I haven't decided on whether or not I will um, be aggressive by placing it above the C or if I'm gonna play it safe and, and put it above the A but yeah so we have two two major plays on the four hour and then when you go to the daily sorry I know it's kind of chaotic
This one I want to keep on. I want to loosen that. Anyways. But in the grand scheme of things, when you're daily, we're still waiting for retracement. So keep that in mind. But again, you can even see it here. Price is re retesting this level. So we'll see. We'll see what this week holds. Uh, this was my Aussie dollar top down analysis. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys took the trade, if you guys have trades on your own. And um, if you want to see me mark up any other pairs. I typically mark up all like 26 or 28 currency pairs. I also do gold and you know the NAS 100 and you know things like that. Um, so just let me know what you guys want to see. And again, I do do these every weekend before the market opens. And yeah, that's it.